Hello guys, uh, let me uh, welcome you to the second course of Learn Spoken English Using Innovative Methods. So, I am Abhishek Shusaga and I have completed my B.Tech Electronics uh, from VIT Pune. I am an MBA aspirant. I have appeared for a few cat, a few entrance exams and currently being interviewed for a few colleges. Besides that, I am a freelancer. I uh, develop Android applications. I am a website developer, blogger and a content developer. We run a group of people called a, a freelancing group called as Half Pace. You can review our work by searching Half Pace on Google Play Store. Also, we also uh, run a website called snafu.com. Besides that, I am an avid reader and my hobby is reading and writing. If you wish to see my other courses, then you can uh, follow me on this link. Okay. So, before moving to the video, please rate, review, comment and share. If you have any suggestions or any doubts, then please write in the comment section. And if you like our work, then please contribute. So the first lesson is how to get rid of the fear of communicating in English. So this lesson has two parts. In the first part, I'm going to tell you about the two step plan to get rid of the fear. So before moving to the lesson, actually, let me tell you why are people actually afraid to speak in English? Well, there are several reasons, but a few dominant of, dominant of them one are self-doubt. So, self-doubt is that small little voice in your head that keeps telling you, please don't open, don't open your mouth. You will say something stupid or you will say something funny. You will make a very horrible mistake. That little voice is called as self-doubt and almost every one of us have it. The second one can be called as confusion. Well, we often get confused between two words or uh, two tenses. Uh, should it be past tense or should it be present tense? Well, a few uh, small things like those. Then a method which is called as translate and speak, which most of the non-native speakers follow, which is we think in our mother tongue. Then we translate that script into English and then we speak. It not only consumes a lot of time, but well we often end up making some funny mistakes i would give an example here my friend who is actually a hindi speaker he used to follow this method so when he wanted to say aap bahut bade aadmi hai he would actually say they are big person which is grammatically incorrect and in this method while following this method most of us actually come across some diff uh, difficult words in our mother tongue which we cannot actually translate like for example the word jhapki in hindi now at uh, well while thinking i cannot actually think of a good word in that's in english so i get stuck across that word and i well i lose confidence and i stop speaking in english so and the last reason being the knowledge gap you may not have uh, you may not have, have proper grammatical structure for a sentence or you may have some or you have poor vocabulary you don't know much words or you have a very weird pro, uh, way of pronouncing a word so and you have made mistakes about that so you are afraid to speak in english so these are one a few reasons well there are several others but we'll mostly concentrate on these four reasons so, well, I have given you a few reasons, but the moral of the story or the root cause is lack of familiarity. Uh, sounds strange? Let me give you an example. Uh, it's an example from my childhood, actually. Uh, my dad used to teach me bicycle, but I was very afraid of riding that bicycle. The causes being, first, I wasn't sure if I'll be able to ride that bicycle. I have fallen from that bicycle a couple of times. I have seen people falling from the bicycles and I was not much familiar of uh, riding a bicycle. But over a period of time, when my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle, well, by how to maintain balance and how to pedal, then I got used to it and now obviously I can ride a bicycle. So English is not much different. 
all you need to know when to paddle and how to uh, maintain your proper balance so i'll be teaching you a few methods to do that don't worry and how to tackle this fear so i have a two step plan for you simple plan read and listen sound simple well don't worry guys it is as simple as it looks like but first before moving to the actual plan let me tell you a few things accept the fear we know you are afraid of we know that we are afraid of speaking in english don't worry about it most of us are even i am afraid of doing so and everybody makes mistake i have an experience of speaking in english for about 10 plus years and i have been teaching it for a couple of years but i am i still make mistakes and you will come across a few of them while actually going through this course so don't worry all of us make mistakes you are not alone in this course and stop being mr perfectionist while you uh, while you are in the initial stage i will tell you to help with grammar don't worry about grammar at all initially we are just going to focus on how to improve our communication skills or how to actually speak in english by overcoming the fear so don't worry about grammar at this stage we can improve on it or you will improve on it in the further period and most importantly find your problem area as i have told you a few things about a few reasons for not uh, having the proper well having the fear in your mind so i would recommend you to go back to the slide and see what is act your actual problem area if you will recognize that problem area then it will help you to overcome it so now let's moving to the two step plan the first step being to read now sounds this really sounds simple but this is what we are supposed to do well what and how to read if you're not a good reader or if you're reading for the first time then i would recommend you to go with whatever you like let let it may be comics or some story books some blogs kora newspapers any random stuff that you find so but you have to slowly upgrade yes it's not like if you have learned if you have read comics then you have to stick with the comics you have to slowly upgrade to story books then you will upgrade to blogs then you will upgrade to newspapers then from a simple newspaper then to a hard newspaper from fiction to non fiction so you have to keep improving your content so and have a diverse content like don't just read about sports read about business and if you want then uh, read about non fiction philosophy whatever you can but read read a lot and don't just read you also have to understand what you are reading and how to know if you have understood what you have read well i use a simple method for this let's say a 5 year uh, five years uh, children is sitting in front of you a small children and you have read something and are you able to explain what you have read to that 5 year small children if you manage to find yourself able to explain that thing then you have understood this thing so a simple rule is if you have understood a particular thing if you can teach that thing to a, any any person who who has not actually read that thing so this is a simple rule to check if you have understood a particular thing or not and what if you don't understand a particular thing don't worry guys everybody of us uh, go through this phase you can use google to understand this thing it will not only help you improve uh, your understanding but it will also give you some more content to read the second step being listening so why to listen why actually how uh, what to listen and why to listen as scientists have suggested a person should uh, listen about 800 hours of content before actually uh, before he can actually start speaking on that particular language don't worry i'm not going to give you 800 hours of content you just have to listen for a few hours but what to listen again if you are not used to it then listen whatever you like 
may it be songs movies sports news or any kind of news what you like but again then you have to improve the depth of the content just don't stick with songs or just don't stick with movies once you have uh, listened to uh, watched a good movie then move to the cnn or bbc watch some good news after the, uh, watching those news you can go for a documentary or a documentary on philosophy that will be a huge challenge my uh, dear friends and as i have told you earlier you have to understand what the speaker is trying to say it's okay if you don't manage to get the speaker you can definitely use subtitles and you can find the subtitles on google's google so yes use subtitles to understand the speaker if you are unable to understand him still use google try to search the content on internet okay so and the new thing in the town is audiobooks if you're not much of a reader then please please actually listen at least audiobooks you will find free audiobooks anywhere on the google there are thousands of books available so i would recommend of uh, recommend you to read uh, actually listen audiobooks so now you'll ask me abhishek we want to learn how to speak in english and you're asking me to read and listen why uh, why the hell are you telling me this as i have already told you as scientists have suggested 800 hours of content is required for you to listen and read before you can actually start speaking in english so i'm just asking you to uh, not 800 hours of content but just a few hours of content it will not only increase your familiarity but it will also help you to learn a lot of new words thousands of new words actually and it will help you understand some common grammatical structures how a sentence can be structured how a sentence can be made well instead of going through thousands of uh, those cliche and complex grammatical rules it is always advisable to go through a lot of content so that you will develop a hang of the content and you will be able to make your sentences again you will also learn what to use where means how uh, what kind of sentences should be used in a business context and what kind of sentences should be used in a let's say personal context like what should you use while speaking to your boss and what can you use while speaking to your friend well you will uh, if you will keep your reading and uh, watching movies or documentaries diverse enough then you will be able to learn this uh, contextual uses as well then the best thing is that you will know the usual stuff the usual usual replies the usual suggestions the usual idioms and phrases like for example how are you i'm fine you know right these are few some usual stuff which you will know along the process and most importantly it will help you develop a thought process so what is a thought process now like i'm able to continuously speak in english because i know what i am supposed to speak next and how is that possible because i know what can be what a particular user has spoken or written in a particular line uh, in a particular book or in a particular movie so i have got a hang of speaking so that's what a thought process is for example as just i had given example when somebody says how are you you quickly know that i am supposed to reply i am fine so this is actually a, a simple example of thought process you will be developing this thought process over a period of time so don't worry you will develop it and now i'm not going to leave you so easily i i will give you some assignments simple assignments again one hour of reading and one hour of listening simple not so you are supposed to follow this method daily and that too for about a week got it so don't worry initially just stick to simple newspapers or simple fiction or simple stories and in the listening part stick to simple uh, movies or songs or news in the end of the course i will also give you some resources to read from or some tools to use for reading so till now you are just supposed to do the basics so thank you i hope you have liked this lesson 
and i will be happy to see you in the next lesson hello guys my name is abhishek shirsagar and i would like to welcome you to the third lesson of learn spoken english using innovative methods so again a small intro i'm a btech electronics engineer i'm an mba aspirant uh, i've cleared a few entrance ex- mba entrance exams and being interviewed for college so wish me luck i'm a freelancer i work as an android developer web developer blogger and content developer we have a group of a uh, few free- freelancers which is half pace you can see our work by searching half pace in google play and we also uh, have a website called snafu.com you can if you like my content then you can follow me here in this uh, unac academy user then please rate review comment and share if you have any suggestions or if you have any doubts then please mention them in the uh, comment section and if you like my work and if you want me to m- keep making some more videos then please contribute so now quickly moving towards our lesson how to get rid of the fear of conversing in english this is the second part of it and i'm going to talk about some common mistakes and problem faced by the beginners so before moving forward tell me what did you read and what did you listen in the last week or so i have told you to read and listen as you uh, if you have followed the last lesson so please mention in the comment section what books or what newspapers have you read and what content did you read and what movies have you watched or what audio books have you listened please mention them in the comment section and let's move towards the first problem which is complicated sentences most of us actually keep making complicated sentences instead of making some simple ones let's go here i am abhishek and i am from a small city which is on the coastline of maharashtra belonging to the west region of the india and near famous club of fort well pretty much complicated isn't it yes but if we can break this down into a simple sentence then it can be something like i am abhishek i am from a s- okay as i was saying i am abhishek i am from a small city which is on the coastline of maharashtra it is near the famous kulab of port and in the western region of india sounds decent and simple enough isn't it so that's what i am trying to tell you please don't make complicated and complex sentences at least not initially make small and simple sentences which are easy to pronounce which are easy to make and most probably which will allow you to make less grammatical mistakes so as you see that while making complicated sentences we kind uh, we have a tendency to mess up with the tenses and grammar if you will make small sentences there is a less probability that you will mess up with uh, tenses and grammar so I, my advice is avoid making complicated sentences and stick to small sentences now this is an assignment for you here is an complicated sentence is given so i wish you to break down this sentence into small sentences and you can uh, you can forward me your answer you can or you can write it in the comment sections below so second common mistake is talking about unfamiliar things now let's suppose someone ask you to write about this topic czechoslovakia are you aware about it no but still you will try to talk something on it without knowing about it let's say if you know that this is the name of a country then you will try to speak something x y z uh 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 this is that this is that and in this method you tend to make mistakes you tend to make a lot of mistakes because you are not sure what do you want to talk so that's why please talk uh, please avoid talking about any unfamiliar sentence or any unfamiliar thing actually and politely decline to talk about it just say i don't know about this thing because if you will talk about it you will make a lot of mistakes and it will hamper your confidence you will feel embarrassed and it will uh, lessen your confidence so unless and until you know about any particular thing don't talk about it 
it's better to know about a thing before talking it so this is another another word i want you to find the pronunciation of this word and meaning of this word and create a simple a simple five line essay or i would say five line sentence over this word by using this word so let's see your answers i would like to get your answers in the comment sections then next is worry too much about grammar well beginners have this habit of worrying too much about grammar they think if i make some uh, grammatically wrong sentence then i will make a fool of myself but i would like to tell you guys even the native speakers even the british and americans have this tendency to make grammatical mistakes but nobody questions them because we actually don't find them making a mistake because they speak so confidently that we think they have not made any mistake but they also have a tendency to make grammatical mistakes so don't worry about grammar don't worry about it initially at least it and you will be making less grammatical mistakes if you stick to the first plan which i have told you make small and simple sentences so you will make less grammatical mistakes so again the takeaway is simple and small sentences okay then worrying too much about fluency well you don't have to be fluent initially you don't have to be you don't have to speak too fast or well faster than the person sitting next to you you are not going to cast any impression on it remember the fastest moving car has the tendency to make most number of accidents so this is also true here if you try to speak uh, in a faster pace then you actually make a lot and lot of mistakes you fumble a lot you make a lot of grammatical mistakes you mess up with the gram uh, you mess, mess up with the tense of the sentence so though you try to impress the person sitting next to you but you actually make a wrong impression by making too many mistakes so please initially try to avoid speaking fast speak in a simple lenient manner in a composed tone stick with the simple small and if possible grammatically correct sentences and let me tell you if you will make small sentences then you will make less grammatical mistakes so again take away is small sentences and speaking without knowing the pronunciation of a word how often have we made this mistake of pronouncing often as often well often enough haven't we same is true with this word dude which a few people pronounce as due day and this word again schedule which we most of us will pronounce but its correct pronunciation is schedule so i would tell you that it's if you uh, without knowing the pronunciation of a correct a uh, correct pronunciation of a word if you try to pronounce it then you kind of make a habit of pronouncing it wrongly and that habit sticks with uh, sticks for a long time it's actually a very bad habit and it takes a lot of time to break it so my suggestion is that before if you find pronunciation of a word very difficult or if you don't know that its pronunciation then please listen it and how can you listen it i would tell you that use google text to speech which most of the smartphones have so use google text to speech to know the correct pronunciation of a word and then pronounce it and as i've already told you you have to listen you have to listen to songs movies documentaries etc to know about pronunciation of a word okay and this is a problem faced by most of us indians when you try to speak in english and when you try to improve yourself others think that you are actually showing off this is a very sad truth but a true one so you actually uh, don't find a proper communication partner for practicing your english skills you get ridiculed by the society actually by the ones who are not good at speaking in english to be honest but 
I would recommend you to not give up because in the end you are doing it for yourself and in the long run when you will get fluent in speaking in English then these people are going to respect you and there is a I have uh, many of my students have t told me that they found they are unable to find a proper communication partner so I have a small request for you to make you can simply write your name and the place where you live in the comment section and the students of this course will find you well rather if there is a student of this course in uh, living in the nearby area of yours then you too can make a group for communicating for communication purpose and you can practice with that person otherwise I will also uh, recommend you to uh, I will ask you to recommend this course to a friend of yours so that he can also take this course and well act as a communication partner okay so if you have any other problems uh, besides this problem then please uh, tell me then again we are not going to end this course without any assignments so if you remember I have given these two assignments in the last uh, last lesson as well one hour of reading and one hour of listening every day I hope you that you're following these two assignments and you will keep following them till the end of this course and till you uh, actually manage to get proper uh, well proper familiarity with English so I recommend you to keep doing these exercises and the new exercise for this week is make a list of 10 words that you pronounce strongly like uh, three I have told you about three words often schedule and dude so there might be a few words that you are pronouncing wrongly and you might end up finding the right pronunciation of it so I want to make a list of that 10 words and again write them in the comment section so at the end of this course I want to see a lot of comments guys I hope you will follow this assignments so thank you again and if you have enjoyed this lecture then please please see the next lecture lesson as well so see you guys that's it for today